Welcome to the training on how to build chatbots using a self-learning approach. In this particular session, we are going to understand history of chatbots. Let's get started. As far as history is concerned, first of all, I would like to welcome you to the future 50 years in the making. Chatbots are not a new fad, but it has only been a few years since the chatbots have become most important for us. Chatbots are the biggest technological trend of 2016 after Facebook F8 conference has been done. There are two main reasons for this. The development of instant messaging services, advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Joseph Weizenbaum launched the first chatbot Eliza in 1966. Can you believe it? It's been so old that the first bot Eliza was available in 1966 to us. But recently it became popular. As I already told you, after the F8 conference and being introduction of a lot of instant messaging services and artificial intelligence, advancement, machine learning and due to other stuff. Using a combination of pattern matching and substitution methodology, Wesenbaum set out to prove the superficiality of human and computer communication while also passing the Turing test. To Wiesenbaum's surprise, a number of people felt Eliza exhibited a certain humanness. From there, we had an evolution of chatbots over the years, including in 1950 earlier we have Alan Turing program. This program was used to purpose the Turing test to determine the intelligence of computer programs. Then in 1972, we have got Parry, and this has been developed by Dr. Kenneth Colby, wrote the next rendition of Eliza, this time modeling the behavior of a person with paranoid schizophrenia. Unlike Eliza, Perry implemented a conversational strategy which helped Perry convince 52% of the psychiatrists that the chatbot was a human patient. The two chatbots finally met one another over ARPANET, an early version of what eventually became the internet. 1988, Jabberwocky. Rollo Carpenter, a British programmer, created Jabberwocky in order to prove that AI is capable of passing the Turing test. In addition to passing the Turing test, Jabberwocky's goal was to entertain people. Carpenter went on to iterate on Jabberwocky over the years, launching it on the internet in 1997 and creating a new and improved version named Cleverbot in 2008. In 1989, we have got IRC bots. Early internet related chat bots like Bill Business, Bartender, and Greg Lindhal's GM were developed to facilitate games over IRC. They are a set of scripts on an independent program that connects to IRC as a client. IRC, you all know, it's an internet relay chat wherein you can communicate over between peer-to-peer -peer communication with users. Bots evolved over time to programmatically manage channels, log channel activity, or look up and provide information when commands are sent from users. An IRC bot differs from a regular client because it does not provide an interactive access to IRC for the human user, but it performs automated functions. 1990, the Lubner Prize, it's an annual competition that judges chatbots based on their human likeness. The format of the competition is based on a standard Turing test. In each round, a human judge simultaneously hold textual conversations with a chatbot and human being via computer. Based upon the responses, the judge must decide which is which. In 1992, Dr. Spesto, Creative Labs distributed Dr. Spesto, an AI speech synthesis program with some of its sound cards. Dr. Spesto would act as the user's counselor, audibly asking the user to tell the doctor about the user's problems. The program's AI was considered rudimentary, with its real goal being to showcase digitized voices. Some users had fun with Dr. Spesto by overloading him with all sorts of input, causing the program to crash with a parity error before resetting itself. 1995 Alice, the natural language processing chatbot known as Alice was created by Richard Welles. While it has won awards for its abilities, Alice has not been able to pass the Turing test. A fun fact for movie buffs, Alice was the inspiration for Spike's John's 2013 movie. This movie Her, which featured the love story between an intelligent operating system and one of its users. 2001, Smarter Child developed by Active Buddy Inclusive. Smarter Child was a chatbot on AOL Instant Messenger and Windows Messenger Live, MSN Messenger you would have known. Networks that provided users with access to news, weather, movie times and much more. The bot became a precursor to Apple Siri with one of the Siri investors, Shar Carolan 
of Menlo Ventures saying, when I first encountered Siri, smarter child already had 10 million users and was getting a billion messages a day. The market was speaking. At that time, they were speaking more on Siri and you can read about Siri, we'll give you some links. In 2010, we got Siri starting its life as an iOS app. Siri was built by Siri Inclusive and purchased by Apple and integrated into all of the Apple's major operating system shortly. Siri uses a natural language, voice user interface to interact with users looking for information that Siri provides based on querying various web services and using machine learning. In 2011, you got WeChat, one of the largest standalone messaging platforms in the world. WeChat has over a billion accounts and allows developers to create chatbots and even apps that integrate into the main WeChat platform through official accounts. The official accounts allow companies to build typical chatbots that respond to user queries and provide information as well as apps that can do much more, including processing payments as well. In 2013, Mitsuku, it's the winner of Lubnar Prize 2013 and 16. It's one of the most human-like chatbots publicly available. Mitsuku is a chatbot created from AIML technology by Steve Wozwick. Mitsuku is available as a flash game on mouse breaker games as well as on Skype and on Kick Messenger under the username Pandora Bots. You would have already heard about Pandora earlier as well. So in 2014, Alexa. Amazon created Alexa as a software powering its Echo device. Like Siri, Alexa uses a voice user interface to interact with users. Users use Alexa to control Echo devices to play music, get weather updates, shop for items, etc. In 2016, the ball of Microsoft, Tai Tai, is an AI that looks like a teenager launched by Microsoft in March 2016 on the Twitter platform, but it is above all the name of a beautiful fiasco. Barely 24 after its launch and after nearly 1 lakh tweets exchanged, Microsoft decided to temporarily suspend the Twitter account of its chatbot and for good reason, the Twitter was tried to trap her and had fun making her say anything and everything. In 2016, Facebook Messenger and Skype APIs were available to you. Facebook and Microsoft both opened up their main messaging apps, Facebook Messenger and Skype to third-party developers with APIs that allow chatbots to be more easily built and discovered in the apps themselves. Between the two messaging apps, there are well over a billion active users. So I hope now you got a little history of chatbots and now you are very sure that right from the Alan Turing machine, then reaching to 1966 Elysia, then reaching to 1977 and till 2016, we have got a lot of chatbots available. And today you have that chance to interact or to create chatbots and integrate with Facebook and Microsoft products like Skype. We'll proceed to practical development of chatbots as soon as we progress with the course. Thank you for watching.